Good morning and welcome to another online Awaken Sermon. And I think it's safe to say that summer has struck. Anyone else? The heat. I love it. Favorite time of year. Now this morning, what I want to do for this sermon is I want to read a prayer. Uh, it's a prayer that I've carried with me for a couple of years now. When I came across this prayer, it struck me as a deeply profound prayer as well as a prayer that I know for me personally I need to revisit time and time again because this is such a powerful prayer. It's a prayer that's found in the book of Psalms and it's by a man named Moses. Maybe you've heard of him before. So let me start by reading this prayer. It's just one sentence but the implications of this prayer go far beyond the however few number of words that are found in this prayer. I can probably count them on two hands. The implications, though, when you sit with this prayer and you think about it, and the, the reason why I want to talk about this prayer today is directly related to this time that we're in right now. So let me read the prayer. Uh, and then we'll talk a bit about what this prayer means for us today and how we can allow this prayer to shape and guide who we are. As I said, this is in the book of Psalms, Psalm chapter 90, verse 12. Here's Moses. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Simple prayer. Just a few words, yet those words, they hit you, right? Teach us to number our days. Teach us to be aware of the fact that we are finite. Our days, yeah, they're numbered. They're limited. So Moses offers this sobering prayer. And what's the reason that he asks for God to help him to number, to count his days. So that we, this is a collective prayer. This isn't Moses praying specifically for himself. He's praying for all the Israelites. This is a prayer that we as humanity need to be praying together. May we learn to number our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Let's look at this word heart for a moment. Heart in Hebrew consciousness it's not the same thing that we think of when we think of heart, that organ that pumps blood for us. Back in the ancient world, heart, it was the center of your inner being. They didn't have an idea of the brain like we do today. So the heart, it's where you made decisions. It's where all of the intellectual activity resided. It's where emotions were found, where they emanated from, the feelings. It's where you would make all of your decisions. So the heart, really, really important part of who you are. Because from the heart, that area within, again, we're dealing with an ancient way of viewing the world and biology. Uh, the heart, it, it's where all the decisions that you made, how you decided or the, the path that you chose, the, the things that you decided to do with your life, it's where they came from. Uh, and then uh, the reason why, uh, a heart of wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom was at the height of what Moses and the Israelites, it, it's what they wanted God to grant them. Wisdom was, it was the pinnacle. It was the goal that ancient people were striving for wisdom, the ability to live your life well. Eugene Peterson, in his message translation, he says, grant us wisdom that we can live well, that we can live wisely. I mean, isn't this what we all want? To live well, to make wise decisions, decisions that lead us into life, that lead us down the path that God desires, a path of fullness, a path that connects deeply with the person that you've been created to be. Now, I mentioned that this is a prayer that I personally need to revisit time and time again. 
And I, I actually preached on this prayer uh, just about two years ago, a little over two years ago. Let me tell you why I want to revisit this prayer with you. I've been hearing from many of us that there is a certain level of fatigue that has set in. We've been living with the coronavirus now for just over three months. It's caused us to change all of our routines, all of our schedules. We were in quarantine for a couple of months. We're slowly beginning to ease out of the quarantine now. Uh, most of our lives over the past three months, they've been lived virtually, which means in-person meetings, they've been non-existent. Uh, so I I've heard this term Zoom fatigue. Maybe you've witnessed that. Maybe you've experienced it. Maybe in the beginning, you were having Zoom meetings every day or every couple of days, and the number of meetings that you've had throughout each week has dwindled to almost nothing at this point. Yeah, there, there's a level of fatigue that has set in from this way of living that we've been kind of forced into over these past couple of months. Uh, some people have said to me, they're beyond the fatigue. Uh, they're at a whole different level. Fatigue was here, but they're far, far beyond the level of fatigue. What these past couple of months have required from us it's a lot of energy, a lot of emotional energy. Don't underestimate all the emotion that has gone into these past three months. It's exhausting and it's draining. I feel it. You feel it. We all feel it. We started by saying that this time was going to present different challenges for each of us. Well, at this point, uh, we pretty clearly know what those challenges have been. Um, and, and for many of us, those challenges, they're continuing. They're not going away any time soon. So yeah, these past couple of months, they've been draining, emotionally draining. They've been exhausting. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you, you've been feeling uh, a sense of exhaustion and you don't know why. Well. It's because of the emotional energy that these couple of months have forced you to have to expend. Now, one response that we can give to this time is we could just wish it away. Uh, we, we could say, well, I, I can't wait for when things go back to normal, whatever normal looks like. And that's a whole other conversation about what normal will be uh, once this begins to resolve. So one of the responses could be, well, I just, I can't wait for this year to be over. I can't wait for this time next year. I can't wait for there to be a vaccine. I can't wait for uh, there to be a full resolution to this so that things could just go back to how they were before. The problem with that response is you're wishing away a certain portion of your life. Think about the prayer of Moses. Teach us to number our days. Teach us to see our days as finite, as limited, so that we can live wisely, so that we can experience every day the gift of breath that we've been given. This isn't a prayer of wishing away a certain amount of time. This is a prayer of fully investing yourself in every day that you've been gifted to experience. So yeah, this is a really hard prayer. This is a hard prayer to pray, especially when we're going through difficult and challenging times like many of us are right now. A couple years ago, I say a couple years, but it was probably more like 15 years, uh, lose track of time so easily now. Uh, there was a movie that came out by Adam Sandler, a movie titled Click. Maybe you've seen it. The whole premise of the movie is Adam Sandler has this remote control that allows him to fast forward time. And so whenever he comes across a speed bump in life, whenever he comes across something that he doesn't want to experience, a challenge, a difficult time, an uncomfortable time, he just hits fast forward and he's able to speed through that portion of his life into what he believes will be 
a better time, a more comfortable time, a time that he would choose to actually exist in. Now, as the movie progresses, Adam Sandler continues to fast forward more and more parts of his life. He keeps coming across times that are just, for him, he doesn't want to experience them. Fast forward, fast forward. And what happens, you can kind of see where this is going, what happens is he ends up at the end of his life. And he comes to the realization that he has fast forwarded through so much of his life that he's actually missed the opportunity to experience his life. He realizes that, yes, he fast-forwarded through all those difficult times, but those difficult times were also some of the most beautiful moments as well. I mean, that's kind of how it works, right? Where we talked about this last week, but tragedy, heartache, and beauty, the gift of life, they're all packaged in there together. You don't have one without the other. Now, because this is the movie, because this was a Hollywood movie, uh, he ends up being able to go back to when he started fast-forwarding and then relive his life from that point forward. And he makes this vow. I'm, I'm forgetting. It's been a while since I've seen the movie. But he, he makes a vow. Maybe he gets rid of the remote control. And he no longer has the desire to fast-forward through any moment of his life. He's learned to number his days. He's learned to see his life as finite. He's learned to see his life, all of it, as a gift. He's learned wisdom. He's gained a heart of wisdom. Now, I know we all don't have that opportunity to be given a remote control where we can fast forward through moments and then look back and realize, wow, the best moments were actually packaged in with the uncomfortable moments. But I believe that we can all gain a heart of wisdom without Adam Sandler's remote control. When the coronavirus started a few months back, I came across an article by an author named Ryan Holiday. And the article was titled, A Lifetime Versus Dead Time. Now, a lifetime, he defines, or let's start with dead time. Dead time, he defines as sitting around and waiting for things to happen to you. There's a great quote. We've been uh, reading Reese, a Dr. Seuss book, Oh, the Places You'll Go. And there's one page all about people who are waiting, waiting and waiting. They're waiting for this, waiting for the phone call, waiting for the bus to come, waiting for all sorts of different things. Then at the end of it, it says, but that's not for you just sitting around waiting. See what... Dr. Seuss is saying in the books the same thing as what Ryan Holiday was talking about in his article. There's dead time, which is waiting, waiting for things to come to you, but then there's a live time. Dead time, that's not for you. The, the waiting, the sitting around, that's not for you. There's something better for you. There's something better for your life. And that's a live time, which Holiday defines as a time when you are in control, when you are making Every moment counts. A lifetime experiencing the depth of every moment, of every day, not trying to fast forward to a quote unquote better time and then realizing that, whoa, there's some stuff here that I don't really like. Let's just fast forward to the next time and then the next and then the next. And then you're looking back over your entire life wishing that you had dove more into those moments that you were wishing away. No, a live time. This is what Moses is praying for. A live time is what you want for your life. And I believe this is what God desires for you. If we believe that we've been given the gift of life, the gift of breath, that God has breathed his breath into us, and it's that breath that sustains us, that gives us the ability to live, to move, to experience everything that we get to experience when we're alive. If we believe it's all a gift, well then I'd have to believe that the greatest way that we can be grateful for this gift that we've been given is to fully invest in 
every moment that we've been given to experience. It's embracing all that life has to offer because we realize the good and the bad, it's all in there together. Teach us to number our days that we may be given a heart of wisdom. See, life is constantly asking us. Yes, it's in this moment, but it's in every moment. Will we live in dead time, wishing for a future time or a past time, or will we live in a live time? Will we live in the present with our eyes open, with the expectation that something is going to happen right now, something so beautiful, and it'll never happen again. That's what makes life so beautiful. This moment that you're living in right now, you'll never get to experience it again. And I understand for some of you, you're like, thank God we are not going to have to experience this again. I get it. I get it. But how do we make the most of even the times that we want to fast forward through? A couple years ago when I gave this sermon on this very same prayer, I talked about a blog post by an author named Tim Urban. And he started a blog a few years back called Wait But Why? Maybe you remember this. I actually, I had so much feedback from this sermon. So maybe some of you are listening to this and you can remember back to that sermon two years ago. And what I, I put up on the screen behind me for, uh, for this sermon were pictures that Tim Urban drew for this particular blog post entitled The Tail End. And what he does in all of his blog posts is he writes and then he draws a whole bunch of stick figures and other pictures to illustrate what it is that he's writing. And in the tail end, in this particular blog post, what he's doing is he is drawing his life essentially in pictures. So he's drawing all the things that we all experience in life. Pizza, eating pizza, uh, eating dumplings, Super Bowls that he gets to experience, Christmases. He's drawing all these things and what he does is after he has lived through it, so he was 34 at the time, he calculated that he was, he says, if he's lucky, uh, he'll live to 90. So he drew 90 Christmas trees and said he'll get to experience 90 Christmases. But then being 34, he'd already experienced 34 of them. So he put big red X's through each of the Christmas trees, 34 of the Christmas trees, to signify that he's already lived through those Christmases. And so now he only has this many more left. So he, he starts with things like Christmases or going to the beach, the number of times he'll eat pizza, and that's a bunch more than Christmases because he says he eats pizza once a month. For some of you, it may be way more than that. But he drew all of this out, red X's to show, okay, well, here's how much I've already experienced, and here's how much I have left. But then he got into things that were a little more substantial than eating pizza or eating dumplings. Time with his family. Time with friends. He said for him, seeing that, and I can attest to this, when you see those images, and many of you said the same thing to me, when you see those images in front of you and you realize that the number of times that you're going to celebrate Christmas, the number of summers like today that we get to live through, they're limited. The number of hours of days with your family, they're limited with good friends. Days of sitting outside on a patio, drinking wine and just having long conversations with friends, they're limited. It puts into pictures this prayer that Moses is praying, this desire that Moses is asking for, God, teach me to number my days. Teach me to see that this won't go on forever. 
And as a result of that wisdom, may I fully invest myself in the season, in the day, in the time that I've been gifted. Yeah, I need to keep going back to this idea. I need to keep praying this prayer. I need to keep looking at those pictures that Tim Urban draws and remind myself it's a gift. What I've been given is a gift. And as uncomfortable, as undesirable as certain moments are, and come on, we all face moments in life we just want to fast forward through. I get it. I've been there. I have those moments. I still have those moments. There's been days during this quarantine with two young kids at home. It's just, can I skip the year? Yeah, we all have those thoughts. It's normal. We all get there. I understand it. But seeing that, reading this prayer, asking for this prayer, it grounds me. It centers me. It helps me make decisions. It helps me realize, you know what? That really not that important. So let me actually give my time to this because these two hours, they're precious. I'll never get those two hours back. And that, the extra weeds that popped up, I, I'm saying that because there's one flower bed that I still haven't weeded. And earlier in the year, I promised Steph that I would get to it. Uh, it's been about two months, haven't gotten to it yet because time with family has been way more important than that flower bed that is off in the distance over there. I mean, that's wisdom, knowing what matters, knowing what to give your time, your attention, your energy to, because we're finite, we're limited. Now, this practice of numbering our days, it has a long history. Obviously, we just read this prayer that comes from thousands of years ago. So this idea, this isn't a new idea. This is something that humans, we've been struggling with this for thousands of years. This is common to all of us. This desire to fast forward, yeah. It happened to Moses. Why is he praying this? Because it's something that's important to him. It's something that he's experienced. He knows that he needs some divine intervention, like we all do in what he's praying and what he's asking for. That's the reason why he's calling out. That's what prayer is. It's when you come to the end of what you yourself can manufacture or do. And so you're crying, I, I need some divine help in this. On my own, I can't do it. On my own, I'm powerless. That's what prayer is. It's when you come to the end of yourself. So Moses is praying this prayer because it's something important to him. Maybe the people that he's been leading Maybe they've been wandering around in the wilderness and they're saying, just let's get to the promised land. And Moses is saying, hold on. Don't miss the beauty of the wilderness experience. In the wilderness, there's tragedy, there's heartache, there's waiting, but there's also times of growth, times of learning, times of discovering the strength that you were born with. So this has been a common practice throughout the years. Monks, they would actually keep on their desk a skull. And every morning when they woke up, they would palm that skull to remember, to remind themselves, one day this will be me. Yeah, it's morbid. I get it. I do not have a skull on my desk. But it's just one way for them that they kept in front of them. Our days are limited. Our days are finite. Let's make the most out of this day. Let's make the most out of this beautiful day that God has given us. So the invitation for us, for all of us, myself included, for this summer, for the rest of this year, for the rest of the time that coronavirus is with us, and then beyond, is to choose to live in a live time. It's to choose to pray with Moses this prayer. Maybe you want to write this down. You want to pray it every morning. You want to put it on your computer screen, on your bathroom window, on the refrigerator. 
by your placemat where you eat all your meals. Teach us to number our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. How are you developing a heart of wisdom? Wisdom is not just intellect. Wisdom is applied knowledge. It's how you're living your life. How are you applying this truth of being finite to every single day? Where are you giving your energy? What, what are you giving your energy to? What are you giving your limited time and attention to? My prayer for you is that you would make the most out of what God has gifted you with, the life that God has gifted you with, even in the midst of a difficult season. And one disclaimer, because I know this can then sound like, all right, I got to be really productive, but go back to a couple of weeks, what makes us human part one, productivity. Uh, one disclaimer is that a live time can be deciding to take a week off with nothing on the schedule and to just see what happens. Take a day off, take an afternoon off with no agenda and just see where the day leads you. See what trouble you can get yourself into. <laughs> so yeah, live time can be just being there without any idea of what the next moment will bring. That's a beautiful thing in itself. So my prayer for you is the same prayer that Moses prayed for himself and the Israelites. May you learn to number your days. May you learn to see your days as finite, as limited. And as you do so, may you gain a heart of wisdom. May you choose well where to invest your time, your energy, and your attention. May you fully throw yourself into your entire life, all of it, every moment you experience, the joyous moments, as well as the more uncomfortable moments, the moments that, for being honest, we simply want to fast forward through. May you throw yourself into all of it. May you experience the depth that every moment you're breathing has to offer. May you see all of this as a gift. And as you do, may your heart explode with the wisdom, the divine wisdom that is given to you as you see this life as a gift. Grace and peace be upon you this week, my friends.